All right, guys, this is the final episode that I did. And as I explained earlier, I won't be doing any more because I'll just be repeating myself over and over again. Um, yeah, I kind of like how in the end of this episode, I actually did a proper review, which ironically in like I guess six minutes in length, I end up saying more than I did in like the past 90 or so. It just goes to show there how that car looks like the style of shit, but I'll get into more about that later. So here's the final one. Yeah, gee, I wonder who they're kicking around there. Oh, look, it's Linkara. No, but in all seriousness, uh, this scene here, or this early part, basically I'm just making fun of how uh, El Dia at one point, the old one, they were banned from talking about um, that guy the glasses. This part here, he just sneezed. Let's bitch about it on our forum. Like, That's how obsessive they were getting. They're over every little minor thing. Look here, I want to spurg. Let's go to 4chan. They actually did go to 4chan at one point. And they're all like, like every little thing, it got really annoying. A lot of people just, the old, older dear child members just wanted them gone. Just like, fuck you, get the hell out of the forum. And like, eventually Monty banned it, which I, I didn't agree with necessarily, but uh, I didn't mind it because it was getting a bit out of hand. And then on, for, on 4chan, I saw some of the, the forums there. They ran off there and they stole some of my fucking pictures. Like the one I did with um Monty... Like, he's looking in the mirror, the, the Pope Cat would look in the mirror, and you see Scarlet in there, like, oh no, I've become what I hated, and whatever the hell I had there. And a lot of them would just, like, get angry at Jordan as well, because he stopped talking about it on Busy Street, and... Yeah, God, you said, though... And that's why those people, around that time period as well, is when I wrote the storyline to make, make fun of those people, so... Anyway, the reference is here. Well, I just got whatever the hell I wanted. I didn't really want to... I was going to say Flash cartoons and that was it. But I didn't bother sticking to anything in particular. I thought, oh, fuck, I'll just grab any random clips I thought were funny. And a lot of these um, Flash cartoons, like a lot of it's where my strange avatars come from sometimes on the forum or on even on YouTube sometimes. But yeah, the Smiling Man. Oh, this villain is just... Uh... It's still the same shit. Ends justify the means, especially when you go to his. I explained that later in the review. His backstory was, "Oh, I, my wife died. I must destroy the world or some shit." And um, like, um okay, I'll explain this a little bit first. You see his face there. That's for those of you who've seen the what else? What else? A little more video. Like, that's the guy that his face. They were like, "Oh, what is he talking to us? Uh, why does he talk to us anymore? He's abandoned us. Why does he talk to us on Skype at 3 a.m. anymore? You don't love me." Like, like I, I basically it was him because on the forum, it was kind of cool. And it was just him, but you know, ironically, you know, hipster. Uh, he was on busy street after all, but it, it was ironically acting like a creepy fucking weeaboo and whatnot. But it was like, you know, it was. You know, funny on the forum. It was just a little, you know, he's he's shtick, I guess, on the forum. It was, you know, like how we got buddy, um, like, comedy cat girl. Well, I, I think she's pretending to be a racist. I'm not sure. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so. I lost my train of thought. Oh, God, this uh, breast expansion devices. When I saw this bits in the review, oh, then the, when I was reading this, I'm like, okay. That's what I definitely had to make an Iron Liz joke. I read the pair... The pre God, I'm angry here, aren't I? But in the previous bits, I saw the little bits I could have used to make fun of Iron Liz, but I didn't think of actually running with a joke yet. But with this one, it just went really creepy with like a breast... Like a whole breast enlargement device is like a... Almost a key plot point in the comic. <laughs> and then when he makes a smiling transsexual joke, I'm like, I've got to use this. I have no other option. And oh God, this... Thing. The Dimension Helping comic. Let's take a look at this thing and here we go. You got creepy furry shit. <laughs> oh god! I'm surprised it wasn't censored by YouTube. Like the artwork's terrible there too. But Christ! Uh, the fact that he openly said, "Yeah, I read this shit." I mean, like, he was so open back then. Now he never admitted. It's more, yeah, I keep adding all this stuff into it, and, you know, I really, I don't know for sure, but he probably is a furry, and on this bit here, 
the whole I need to suit up. I took a little Barney Stinson joke there, but I'm obviously stretching it here. I'm intentionally thinking, oh, I think he's close to being a furry. I better find a joke. And I, I'm obviously being a dick. This isn't proof or anything. I think everyone can tell. Here we are now. Let's do it up. It's for the, um... But in the picture I use that confirmed Linkara as a furry, like, I, sh I use bunny ears, I was lazy, I don't know. I probably should use cat ears, because it's obvious he's with a cat girl love interest, and that webcomic shop there probably should have made him look more like a cat rather than a bunny. The Louis fuck pig thing there, like, it's not that funny. I kind of wish I didn't do it. And even when I was doing it, I kind of realized it wasn't that funny. I was going to run with that Louis fuck pig bit. And by the way, you should watch this through YouTube poop. It's fucking hilarious. Billy Mays is just perfect for YouTube poops, but... Yeah, like, um... Uh, now I lost my, lost my train of thought again. But yeah, um... Yeah, back to the Louis fuck pig thing, like... Uh, I keep losing my track of the fuck, now this, the buddy, Batman ripoff, like I mentioned it earlier in the commentary, like, it's so gratuitous, I mean, he thinks he's doing it as a cute little reference, but it's just, ugh. but yeah, uh, again, I'll try to talk about the Louis fuck thing, I plan on making that more of a running gag and talk about it a bit longer in the review to, because you'll notice at one point, I get really angry, like, once I do the Iron Liz bit, where I like finally make the joke and I start snapping, I, I was meant to build that up, but I realized that Louis Fuckpig wasn't that funny. It just said, I, I, I acknowledge it was juvenile, but it was just, eh. it would have been really shitty. It would have brought down the review if I went along with that. And, and about in this video, I, I just thought it was ironic. Like, he jumps on the, oh, I fuck RA Gamer. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, my fans say that, so I'll join in too with that review. Like, I'll be honest, I found it funny when I watched the Zara Gamer parody. I know some people were saying it was shit. I thought it was good, but. It's probably the only funny thing he's ever done, but it's the irony, he's just the gratuitous Batman ripoffs here. Like, I'm surprised he doesn't notice it at all. And more cameos and yeah. But anyway, now, now I've got, I haven't got too much to say. There's a little funny bit here where I'm Rick Funny Bills and you see that bristle with device to make him sound really creepy because, you know, at that point. Yeah. But anyway. There's, like I said before the first second review, there's not much else to add to this comic. I pretty much explained it, especially in the real review bit. But with the style of reviewing, though, you end up repeating yourself so many times. And what and when I did did the review, like even I could t little times where I thought uh, I really. D D didn't want to do it in the Linkara style because it started taking so damn long to write about every little fucking bit about it. And like every you review every panel and you nitpick every little thing, you're gonna repeat yourself. And even now, I'm repeating myself, explaining how I'm repeating myself ironically. But um, but with their style, that's why these reviews are half an hour long. Like the actual real review of the end here. That's only like six minutes, and I say more in six, probably more in six minutes, about as much, if not more, than I, well, I express my opinion better there than I did in like 90 minutes, the, or the most of the, let's say, let's say I estimate 75 minutes I, I spent reviewing the comic. And, uh, and anyway, but the fact that he's obsessed with dialogue, but again, I'll be repeating myself again. And I... And because of the, after doing this, oh, first of all, you should really pause and look at all these. There's some little tidbits here, like, oh, some of it's like Dick's being great, I haven't loved bringing it, but there's a part of the, oh, it was really creepy on, um, if you read the comments on the, um, where, I, where he said, oh, he was a feminist in 2007 and that, this girl called Abby comes around and says that apparently Linkara, <laughs> he I went behind this girl's back and talked to all of her friends and asked, oh, why doesn't she like me? Why, like, I, it wasn't a sexual thing, but why does she hate me, like, entirely? Just as a friend, I, I think. And she explained how creepy that was. But anyway, like, I... After watching this, uh, doing this, I don't feel like what the Dakar Lagasses do is fair use anymore. At first I thought, okay, it was. I agree with, like, that video with Lindsay where, um... The one I mentioned in an episode, one of the other commentary, well, then Kara... Where the car said, oh, well, on the car, Lizzie was talking about Lizzie saying, oh, no, what we do, we probably get away with it, fair use, but 
when we use extra clips and stuff, like, of course, and all that, in non-Street Fighter reviews, then that's not fair, you used to get in trouble. That was my view before I did this. Now, after doing it, I could have, like I said, the actual review was six minutes, I could have said a lot more, like, I, you could do, you could say everything you need to say, everything they need to say, in less than half an hour. Like, Doug's original reviews were 10 minutes. They're like 40 minutes now, or something ridiculous like that, where they show every little scene. Like, is that necessary for your opinion? And I'll gladly admit, well, I'm, this reviews, they technically, no, these reviews are not f fair use. I would say they're not, because I went overly, and definitely picked every little page, but it wasn't necessary. I could have expressed my opinion on all three comic books, and, like, you know, I've gone 10 minutes now, here. 10 minutes and 13 seconds, whatever it says. Like... I could have ex dumbed that down so, like, I could have, in 10 minutes I could have been done by now. Explaining how good the comic is. So for them to say it's fair use, with well, all the footage they use is bullshit. In fact, there's one, I'll put it in the description. Uh, the, uh, was it, um, Spoonie did a review of, um, what's the, uh, Tekken, the Tekken live action movie. And another guy, was, he was on DHA, he's not, he was like a little bit, he didn't post too much, but he had like a, a video series called, um, Extremely Bad, not Extremely Bad Reviews, like, uh, basically he did the thing, like a Yahtzee stick figure thing, and his reviews was like seven minutes long. He has a little bit where he explains it with no spoilers, another bit with spoilers, it was like seven minutes. Spoon is half an hour long, with footage of the movie, but in the end, the opinion was exactly the same. Really, like, Spoonie stuff was all fluff. And that's, you know, that goes to show that, hang on, you could go to a court of law and use that as an example. I say, like, hang on, his opinion, no different from this. He uses no footage. Spoonie uses half an hour of footage. Is this fair use? And with the room, again, like, are they really using that footage to analyze it? Or are they looking, say, when they review the room, oh, look at this, ha, ha, isn't that shit? Oh, look at Tommy Wiseau, so isn't that shit? Like, what's the point of me now watching the room when I've seen all the scenes? I have seen everything funny. Like you've, you're just a middleman now because you're not really adding much insight to it with all the footage you're using. Like there isn't 30 minutes worth of review here. Like when you've explained every little plot point and not add much to it other than oh that's dumb. And ultimately, it's not really an in-depth review. It's like a, it's borderline like a commentary. And you know, include on that, I really don't think it's fair use at all. Because you could easily, well, okay, I shouldn't say it's not fair use because even like, like Tic Tac on the forum, he's talked to people who know like fair use law, and even then, it's up to interpretation. It's very hard. No one can say they're an expert, especially on the fucking internet. When ex actual experts are saying it's pretty vague and it's a grey area, no one should say, "Oh, fair use, I'm protected," unless it's something really obvious. Like if it's a review, you use like your six minute review, you use like you know less than a minute of footage, then, okay, then you probably get away with it. But generally, no one should be screaming fair use, fair use. Even Lindsay said there was a bit of a grey area, but she even said Doug would probably win. She didn't say he'd definitely win, because she doesn't know. But, yeah, like, no one can say definitely fair use, though, because it, a, a case could definitely be made that it's not fair use what they're doing. And I'll into this bit now where I snap... It's just, God, I'm really turning up the ang anger, aren't I? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I was never being classy, come on. <laughs> oh, God, my... Oh, God, that looks terrible. But, yeah, some of the little things I'll put here. Like, I mean, this is a man, her derb, that's popping up. That's make you fight if everyone's really... <laughs> one bit I'm an imp but I'm the she but anyway a little South Park reference here that wasn't that funny no. I love how angry I get here like I sound like I'm going insane like I just like I am this has finally made me snap I reckon probably the funniest jokes here is when I say like real like Carl's gonna betray his Christian values and turn gay like that's <laughs> I thought that was probably the best joke, because I really got into character, and like, really started, like, sounding like, you know, like I said, Lindsay, not Lindsay, <laughs> well, she makes me snap too, she pisses me off, but, um, you know, I just drove, like, just drove me to insanity, like, kind of like my voice just went into 
you know, different mode there. You're probably wondering how this smiling man saga concludes. Well, I can gladly tell you that it is... Yeah, I'll talk about the crossover lord now. I'll go, I went in kind of in depth here. But, um... The fact that he thought he immediately made a, a giant crossover, the whole point of it, it felt, when I was reading it initially, I'm like, okay, this is kind of a cop-out, nothing happened. And then you're not going to explain, I read the actual comics themselves, I'm like, hang on, there's no conclusion here, but then I see, ooh, it's a crossover that I have to read all about, I'm like, I feel like I kind of had to read it. And, um, like I said, the comic is, the crossover lord isn't that bad. It starts out really, really shit. I'm not sure if I explained it in the review or not. I, I don't think I did too much, but, um, it starts out really a uh, typical Lakara story. It's a little bit better because like, the other writers contributed and made it a little bit better. But before I go into depth about that, the crossover stuff, it's obvious, like I mentioned, I've already mentioned here, but it's obvious he inspired the crossover shit. I think he did some of, I think he did the first one. I think the first ones was Benzai and, um, what's he? The, the Kiwi guy, I don't know, the sheep fucker. But, uh, <laughs> I'm Australian, I've got to call him a sheep fucker. It's a tradition over here. But, um, yeah, like, he does it so much. Like I mentioned earlier, in the other commentary he did with Spoonie, he does it with everyone. And now they all do it. It's, it's gratuitous. And I, I think it was, uh, I showed that picture of Lindsay and Doug there where Nick Jordan said it, and it's so true with the crossovers. I'll go back to the crossover a little later. But it's so true that you know, the crossovers are pointless. They're both saying the exact same opinion. Look, I've never seen them have control. The contradictory opinions, like one saying, oh, I agree, no, I don't, I think this is good, and you never see that, and it'd be way more interesting to see them argue and like, disagree on things, because then the crossover would have a you know, purpose, you see two different insights rather than the same insight, written by two people, and I think you get that because they review something so terrible that, of course, everyone's opinions could be the same, like, you know, if, they, if somebody did a crossover of the room, it's the same shit, you know, yep, it's dumb, it's... Oh, look how dumb this is. You know, you're not really adding anything new to it. I'll say, you know, Spoonie talked to someone who liked Final Fantasy VIII, and Spoonie said, this is shit. Like, oh no, but this part is good. That would be more interesting, and the crossover would have purpose, but you never see that. Because, no, I need to be a ranty man and just shit on everything, because that's my gimmick. You know, it gets boring after a while. But yeah, I've already gone... I've already gone to death about how I hate those char- those type of characters oh, one poor writing and whatnot. But um, anyway, b- back to the crossover lord. Look, like I said, it starts out really shitty, typical. Like I already mentioned in the review, where like, oh, well, my wife's dead, and I'm talking about it here. Like, my wife died. I must destroy the world, and that's all it was. Like, literally, a couple of panels explain the backstory. That's really half-assed and shit. And, like, in the end, like, it slowly gets better. You can tell, like, 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 like he's earlier on, he's drawn a lot more. Pa- like, that's one of the early pages. Like, I, and again, those, well, I don't think that's in the comic, but a couple of pages he does initially. But slowly towards the end, there's less and less pages done by Linkara. Eventually, there's, like, one near the end, but he doesn't do anything. And, and usually the writer of the comic has, like, a comment at the bottom. And it was pretty much two or three guys who did a lot of the work there. Like, you s- so the guy did, uh, Darzian, you know, I'm pronouncing it right now, like, Darzian, like, that guy did, a, his name kept popping up a million times, I think Al, the guy did the other one, the My Mistress one, like, those two popped up a lot, and then Kara barely, was barely there, and you could tell it's he wasn't involved too much, because, you know, the, his character was written, you know, oh, like, by the way, Avatar, I thought, if I want to why I put that in there, I think Avatar was just... Uh, uh, it looked nice and everything, but like the way they portrayed the military was just uh, you know, like the one guy had like, the me- the guys in the mechanism a knife. He's like smiling, like ah, I want to kill people. Like that just shows what James Cameron thought of the military, and they were just portrayed as so dumb and and evil, like, over the top evil. Like they, and I like I said in other commentaries, and even in this um this little bit here, the real review, I hate over the top evil villains, and that's so why I thought Avatar was just shit. Like the military guys were over the top evil, and buddy, um, the, the corporate guy was over the top evil. But yeah, back to the, cro- the crossover lord again. It started getting good towards the end. Like it never, it never was great because I had to work with Lankara's story. But they changed. There were a couple of moments that were good, and like I said in there, the character development was great. Like, like almost all the characters had a, a clear personality except for Lankara's. His was boring and dull, and the rest of them actually had a decent character to it. 
And like, the way they wrote them interacting, in general, it wasn't just those two, those two characters, the uh, my mistress and Darcy. And that was the best example because that was like the most ob- obvious one. Like, yeah, they're both drastically different people. And it was funny when, um, look at, uh, the my mistress character, apparently, like, she's really normally like, smart, intelligent, and whatnot. But, um, Apparently she snaps when she goes has blonde hair and just acts really dumb, and when she's dumb, does it and her finally get actually start getting along, which I thought was pretty was pretty funny. And yeah, like even then, like all like the way they interact is natural, and the way the story plays out eventually feels natural. And they, the way they ended it was nice as well. With the the wife that came into it near the end, where um he was going crazy, he wanted to destroy the world, but then the the wife that says um uh. I can't remember what it was specifically. It was a bit of saying, oh, all right, I want the world to be peaceful. I don't want the world to be damaged, and I'm okay. Like, I think, you know, sort of implied she was okay with being killed by the guy because, you know, it would have benefited the world. And then she's, and then he's like, oh, my God, what have I done? Oh, oh, why would I do this to, oh my God, I did this for her, but, you know, I'm, it's such a horrible thing I'm doing. And then, he, you know, it stops, and he stops being a dick. It, make, it makes some sort of sense. And even oh, I was gonna say something else as well about my, the um. Oh, that's right. It, there were so many elements in there that were obviously cut. Like there was one part where they were in the armory or something. I don't know what. The, it was a strange. Like okay, why did they? In the end, like it's never mentioned again. I don't. I, I'm assuming they just changed heaps of shit. Like obviously they okay. The car is not here anymore. We can cut this, cut this, cut that. Because around the time, like crossover law started coming out, he joined that guy with the glasses. And it's obvious there was less... You know, he, it's clear he dished him. He says on ED he dished him, and it's obvious he did. Like, he sees he's made no contribution to it. You could tell his writing was just gone, and they completely changed everything. And the way they're writing it too here, like, we, he actually has conflict, and, like, they make him look more uptight. Like, it's obvious he's not... He's not involved. Because, you know, he wouldn't portray himself that way. He's, you know, Lightbringer's perfect in every way. I, I am perfect Superman. I have no personality flaws. Like, even though there's one bit in epi- the fourth one, the one after this one that I'm reviewing, where he gets in a reporter's face, he's like, you are wrong, the media is bad, or some, you know, some preachy fucking tirade, and he just comes across as an obnoxious dick. And, uh, but he doesn't realize it. <laughs> Yet, when people wrote his character, like I mentioned here, they knew his character was a preachy dick. Which, you know, anyway... I think I've rambled on long enough about the crossover lord. And yeah, the, apparently we did another one, crossover kill. I heard about that, but I haven't read it. But yeah, crossover lord. Uh, I'm not saying I wouldn't recommend. It's hard to recommend because it's it's okay. Like if you really like if you read crossover like Lucara stuff and that, it's it's interesting. It was interesting. The reason I was able to read through all of it was to com- compare and see how everything progress and see how the story slowly got better and sl- and slowly there was more character development and slowly it got more interesting even though there's some bits that are kind of random in there as well it wasn't perfect it wasn't perfect by any means even towards the end but it got a lot better and yeah, even here i might as well talk about what this bit here like i'm saying he's interacting with characters is lame it really is like even towards the end it's just talking about what's going on there's never no character building like Lakara. If he, he he'd probably hate the Big Lebowski because that movie's nothing but character development. Oh, there's no plot going on in that at all. The plot makes it. There's nothing going on in that movie. It's all character development. Everyone talking. That's and yeah, and it's actually a character's interacting. That's what makes the movie great. A lot of even like I did some. I was, I was studying 3D. Like I did the film teacher because that. It was explaining that bit for narrative and then he's saying like this movie. The movie's a prime example. He uses of just character development. And the characters interacting with each other and how to write that. And you know, he'd hate that. He's obviously the kind of guy who cares about the big picture going on in a storyline. Which is why he rambles on in his reviews sometimes about the politics are wrong and uh, this feminism bad. Like, he doesn't really care about the core you know, discussion, like the core characters talking about each other. He'd love you know, really political movies. Anyway, it's the final bit here. But I'm, I actually like the real review bit better than anything else because... They really go in depth, and I can't explain my opinion better. But yeah, as I've said here, I you write good characters, good characters interacting with each other, the story will come naturally. So the storyline here, 
I kind of like how this turned out, considering I'm filming this with a tiny little fucking, you know, sheep webcam. She kind of looks like he's standing on a podium. It's just on a box. Like, that's the um, House of the Dead Overkill Big Bang Box little thing I bought. Just shoved it on there and... Looks okay. But there's one bit here where I say, um... Monty... Okay, the, the Brit fag and he's a tack dog. That's a reference to Moocha. Where he actually says, oh, that Monty and his attack dogs, damn it, why are you abandoning me? You all hate me. Like, he got really paranoid, you know. He's, it's not the first time he's done that. And the DDoSing here is reference to, I think it was medical forums apparently did it. Apparently, no one knows. Of course, DHR got accused of it and whatnot. But, um, yeah, they actually did get DDoSed. So I thought that was pretty douchey. So I thought I'd have that near the end there. It's their final plan to do something really dumb and, you know, DDoS them because you don't like them. It's just insane. Usually when you DDoS, it's for something serious. A bit like a Scientology website. Anyway, here I do the the pair of guns. Like the soul of a dead girl, the pair of guns. That's apparently the Kara's magic gun has that storyline where it's my has a soul of a dead girl in it, so I made fun of that. And that part there, that was a shit camera shot. I was trying to make it look like I was a giant, but it didn't work. I'm like, eh, I'll keep it in there anyway. And obviously here I'm making fun of how money hungry they are and that guy the glasses. Like immediately I say I'm a Megazord and bam, quote T. Because that's what they do. So much quote T bullshit they have there. Like, like Spoon, like SMN's video on Spoonie's web store just shows how gratuitous they are with it. And here I have, I have the Green Ranger pout, the Green Ranger music playing because obviously, you know, making fun of Lucara. You know, seeing himself as a Green Ranger even though he's too fat for the costume. <laughs> I look like Angry Joe here, don't I? <laughs> anyway, here's a nice final pot shot at Spoonie because I felt like it. There's a few references here. I think, um... It's, it's all this references in real life things. So, which one does I say here? The 2000. I don't think... I think he was banned. Yeah, he banned people for that as well. And this part he definitely bans people for. Yeah, my new theme song sucks. He actually banned people for that. Uh, what else? Actually... <laughs> Yeah, too aggressive. A Deadliest Warrior, people said, dude, what the hell are you being a douche? She banned him too. Yeah, I think he also started banning people when they said that, um... Oh, he got into vicious arguments with people because, like, they said something about Star Wars he didn't like. Like, it just shows... That, just shows that he hates his community, treats them like shit. Anyway, here's a plot shot of The Escapers. Because anyone who's been on DHI, people who don't know... Oh, the Escapers is... Yeah, I'm looking like a hipster. I've grabbed any crap I could. And that's just 3D glasses with the holes punched out. But, um... This is actually a character I do with Electric Rock Art videos, but basically I just want to make fun of them because they're real hipsters. Like, any non-left-wing opinion on Escapers gets banned. Even other, like, other left, people leftists I know think, oh, come on, this is gratuitous. Like, they just ban. Like, it was so ridiculous. Like, there's some people that say, they say some weird shit, like, um, I don't know, I can't remember what it's, I can't remember exactly, but I like, just... Escapers are really bad with that too. They're more passive aggressive than that guy with the glasses and co. Your name is oh, that bit there. Like, your mother's name is Arbanel. I'll kick your ass, man. That's like, in Spoonies when he got drunk and he cried about Scarlet. Oh, I used to go to the movies with her. Like, he actually, when he was drunk, he said, Lakara, he said, oh, your mother's name is Arbanel. Spoonie drunk said that to Lakara. So I thought that would be a good troll comic because that's kind of something a troll would say, even though Spoonie actually said it. What else? In this final bit here, he tries to reason with him. Wait, it's kind of making fun of how some of the trolls, like a lot of the, the even the aggressive ones, I know the normal people say it too, but they say, oh, I'm just giving constructive criticism, I'm just giving constructive criticism, but I know some people do, but some of them don't. Some of them are pretty much saying, oh, Scarlet's a ginger cunt, oh, you banned me for constructive, for giving, you know, an opposing view, but, you know, some of them were dicks, like a guy like a thumper, which I'm surprised I didn't take a pot shot at. He basically, it's to explain to you who, who he is, he basically, he said he was going to spend $400 on the charity drive just to ask Mooney, why was I banned from your forum? And he, like, what, I'm not going to be unbanned? And fuck you, like, you know, pretending it's he's sincere and just wanted to, yeah. And the employment gap on your resume, like, I, I hate that personally. You will get that smug about it. Uh, the employment, oh, this bit here, though. Here when I said that, I sent you a letter, you're in grave danger. On the ED discussion page, or the old one, now it's gone, someone actually said, 
they actually wrote there, I'm going, I actually sent a letter to Linkara saying he's in grave danger. And then and apparently he said, oh, then Linkara and, Lin, and I and Liz moved out. Did I do it? I guess he was proud of it. I'm like, that was the douchiest thing any anti like person person's ever said. And I thought that'd be the perfect thing to end it with. To actually, you know, go that far and like imply that he's under threat. It's ridiculous. And protest so far. This last bit. I'll go on a rant about that. It's funny, right after that, that's when Monty banned all discussion. I thought that was a, of Deco the Dusters for a little bit on the original forum. And I feel that was a perfect time. Because them going to SOPA, like I made a pot shot there, like oh, the, the Starving Children go with that. Basically, they cancelled the charity drive. Which I know some people have said, oh, it was a scam. It wasn't. If you believe that, you're a fucking idiot. Sorry, Jordan and Co. You were full of shit and you know it. But, um,. For them to cancel the charity drive, would they actually help people? They'd rather walk around in Washington, be douches, oh, look at me, I'm going to Washington, I'm protesting everything, but you're not important enough to change anything. Remember Spoonie posted, like, a response he got. It's like, well, no shit, of course it was just a gener generic response, and everyone's like, the comments like, oh, why did they give you a generic response? Why aren't they listening to you? It's like, you're not important. He's not important enough to change things. Going to Washington like that was pointless. Like, you'd rather feel like you're uh, making a difference rather than actually making a difference with a charity drive. And I thought that was just morally disgusting. <laughs> Speaking of morally disgusting, oh God, it's still funny. He tried to sell t-shirts. Oh, fucking hell, it's still funny. Just look at it. Fucking look at it. 1990. I don't believe he tried to sell t-shirts right away. That's... That's absurd. You can still buy them now if you want, but... You know... Oh, God. But anyway, back to the SOPA thing, like... They went to protest SOPA. They are all going there. Oh, look at... Like, they didn't need to do that. I think... Oh, what's it? Um, Game of... Oh, this is a little bit of the end now. The Game Anthropologist said, um... Oh, I... I would... It was good when they had the little newsletter thing there saying... Oh, oh apparently... Like, when you opened the site, there was a thing popping up saying, Send this to people for SOPA. That was fine. They could have just sent Michael or just Doug and that's it. That would have been okay. But the fact that they cancelled the charity drive, I'm repeating myself now, but I just... You'd rather home... I think it was McDonald's house charity. Right? I think it's for homeless children, I think. Homeless children on Christmas. Yeah, fuck them. I need to be a pretentious douchebag in Washington. Like, what the fuck? You weren't going to change anything. What stopped it was really... Let's face what it really was. It was Google and Wikipedia killed it. The two biggest, well, two of the biggest websites had the blacklist, and that killed it. You know, and the internet in general, as a collective, did. But that guy with the glasses, you know, going there and saying, "I'm on that guy with the glasses," you're going to ruin me. Like they won't give a fuck. You're small time. No one knows who you are. You weren't going to change shit. Talking to them directly wasn't going to do anything. It was just for you, for you to feel good, and you and your producers to feel all special and shit. You weren't going to do anything. And yet that's douchey, and I'm like, okay, that's douchey, but whatever. But the fact that they cancelled the charity drive to do it is what pisses me off more. Homeless children didn't get, what, 50, 30 grand first year, 50 grand they raised the second year. No, no money for them now. No, I needed to feel like a douche in Washington. That's, I, that's just disgusting. And yeah, that was a perfect thing to end all DHI discussion. Like, that was the most egotistical thing they ever did. But yeah, so, yeah, to conclude, yeah, I... I enjoyed making it, but I'm probably never going to make a video, videos that long ever again. Like half an hour is insane. Like I'll never do, even for like an in-depth review, I'll probably be like what, maximum 15 minutes. I'm never going to go over 20 minutes again. That, that'll be the max, if that. You know, 15 minutes is probably the most I'll go. That, that, I enjoyed doing it. I like the way it turned out. You know, and slowly it got pop, it got semi-popular. It's not my most popular video. I, it's film brain at the moment, but I reckon that my Fetty Got Fingered trailer is going to exceed it. It's, slow, it's consistently getting like a thousand views a month. That's slowly going to exceed it. But yeah, I enjoy making it. I'll never make anything that long again. And as I've already explained the other commentaries, I'm not going to do more than car library because I'll just repeat myself. But yeah, I, I'm glad people liked it. I'm glad most people... You know, got a kick out of it. Even some people who said that I like Linkara and I still found this funny. I get that a lot from some of my videos. Like, people who like that Golden Glasses still like my parody stuff. Because as Lindsay, Lindsay said, yeah, oh, she's, 
she said it, but she didn't really like. She quoted uh, Mel Brooks, I think, and said like, "You got to enjoy what you're parodying." I don't think that's true because I didn't like Lockbrig. I didn't like. I don't like a lot of that guy. Like, but I think the point is. Do it for humor comes first. A lot of my that guy glasses related videos. I'm doing it to be funny rather than to be a dick, which is why my other like commentary that I'm the one I called unofficial that guy glasses anniversary wasn't that funny. It's probably the worst video I've ever done because I was trying too hard to you know talk to footage and it would end up being really mean spirited. It, it, it came across that way. I, I still like it's still a bit funny in some bits, but the point is though. I guess to conclude this, I'll say, try and be funny. If you're going to make fun of anything, make that the priority, even if it's mean-spirited. That, that doesn't matter. That's, as long as you're trying to be funny rather than, like, this is why you're wrong, then it won't be that funny. And yeah. So in the end, I enjoyed making them. It took a long time. I did it in chunks, obviously. I did it in between school breaks, which is why I kind of wish I you know, stuffed my sh- shirt with buddy, you know, to make me look fatter as I went along, like, you know, like when Carl got fat, I kind of wish I did that, and have a little bit, like, I didn't look like I was obviously tied up, like, I wanted to actually tie myself up, but still, I'm glad how it turned out, I'm glad people liked it, and I'm glad, you know, all the people enjoyed it, and to all those people who've actually sat through this commentary, which is like all two of you, I'm glad you had the patience to do that, and, you know, see some insight on how this worked, so I'll post some links in the description explaining some of the references, and yeah, I'll catch you guys later.